So yeah. Um, so one of the reasons why I started filming myself was actually not that I wanted to be praised and hailed. And it was never my intent to only show the good parts of life. Because what I realized as I was diving more into myself and really discovering what spirituality meant for me, I saw that what people were trying to create with the label of spirituality was this kind of self-glorifying image of being a real saint. And what I felt was that the world already has enough of that. There are already enough people who want to be praised, who want to look like they have everything working out for them, who sit down in some kind of lotus position and then they say things like, you know, hello angel and all that kind of stuff. But what I was realizing as I was diving more into the depth of my own emotional, yeah, spectrum. And as I was learning more about how I felt and I became more honest about the way I felt, I realized that I had been lying to myself most of my life. And I realized that the people that were talking about spirituality, they had no background for their statements. They had read things online or in books or had heard other people talk about this. And they wanted to be that, but they had no footing. They had no balls to really become that. They just wanted to be it and to them it was nothing more than an easy escape. So they felt terrible and what their solution was to that was to take the easy path and simply pretend or keep on pretending and putting on another suit, another mask. And so the shape of their lies changed, but the lie remained the same. And I simply wanted to show with my work that in order to get to a state of bliss, in order to deal with fear and anxiety and to calm down and quiet down and in order to really get to the place where you could sit and meditate for hours because you are so full of love and light that there is no effort in holding the meditative state anymore. Because what is the meditative state? It's a state of flow where you manage to hold the focus by resisting the urge to be dragged into your own suffering. Because suffering happens. Whether you participate in that suffering or you simply use the suffering as a kind of lifesaver to show you, oh my God, this is how I, I have been feeling all the time and I try to keep that away from me. So I use my suffering to seclude myself from the people that surround me. And I sit with my own suffering, with my own depression, with my own dilemma, with, with my own emotional debris. And I work to clean that with the methods that I have now adequately shown online, which is physical exercise, creativity and opening up and being honest dead honest about everything. Transparency is the new word and nobody does that. Everybody says they want transparency, transparency, but nobody is transparent. So my work about my work is showing that in order to get to the place where you have a routine, a physical routine, you have to put in a lot of work and most of it is emotional work. That's the deep healing that everybody wants, but nobody wants to put the work in because that's the really heavy lifting.
because if you work with your own depression if your feelings of pain and anger and all that kind of stuff is so heavy that you can never get off the couch well then you have to start doing something and changing the diet doing cleansing you know these are all parts of the package the spiritual package it's not enough to say i'm spiritual you have to live that and with that comes the responsibility for the way you feel and for the goals that you feel like you actually have in life but to simply say you have goals will not bring these goals about so if you say you're spiritual you have to make sure that spirituality then becomes a part of your life and this this is really the point we are at right now in this kind of society or system that has been created i haven't really helped creating it but probably i have but now i'm in it so what do we do with it well we have to look ahead and instead of clinging to the internet and all these things yes we use it while it is available to share what we learn because we actually made the experience and not because we read it in a book you cannot talk about enlightenment if you have never felt that and if you don't know how to get there yourself you may have had an experience that felt enlightening but what you may realize is that that was just the you know you were just scratching the surface because from your place where you started maybe that felt enlightening but then you get to further states of enlightenment and you realize there's more to come right i mean this is just the beginning because enlightenment is you're having insights oh wow this is how it truly is right you're just scratching the surface you know i barely scratched the surface is how i feel like you know there are so many things i have no idea about so i also try not to talk about them i talk about my own experiences and i show what i have learned by simply doing it the only reason that i use words to express what i'm doing already is because people are so confused that they need directions they need people that have understood what is happening inside of them to open up about it you know you can do art but if you can't explain it to others because you want to keep it to yourself because you're selfish and you actually don't want others to make art because that would you know enable them to do what you do and then you would feel less special well my approach is i simply share everything i show exactly how i do it and i say how i've done it i don't do this with all of the stuff but i've shared enough of it because i want that we as humanity can grow out of this shit show that we've created and that means we have to stop exploiting nature but we can only do that if we start connecting more to our own nature and to stop you know putting our penis into everything or inviting every guy's penis into us so we have to learn to be okay on our own because that gives us stability and this is basically what my work is showing i've been spending the last one to two years mostly on my own it was a struggle but i learned so many things about myself that i could have never learned if i would have people if i would have had people around me that would have kept trying to tell me how to do things that they know nothing about because they don't do them themselves because if they would do them themselves they wouldn't feel like telling me you know they would rather spend their days doing them and maybe showing how it's done and the people that i met along the path they were good at telling others how to do things only they weren't listening to themselves and that's the point about being alone you open up to how you feel and you start listening to yourself and then you act accordingly which in my case was i want to exercise 
Now I had to figure out how. I realized calisthenics and going out in parks wasn't really that for me. What I wanted to do is be alone in a room where nobody can see me unless I want them to. And then I do the exercises that I feel like doing because then nobody can judge me for that. Nobody can look on me and look down on me and all that kind of stuff. What I wanted to do was do what I felt like doing and I've done that adequately. And now I can talk about it. And now I can teach others how to do it and others can simply learn from me by observing what I've done. But the feeling they have to work on themselves, how to feel how I feel or how they feel about watching me when I do the things that I do, because that comes from a place of feeling. I feel like doing it and then I do it. And when it gets too heavy, I probably stop or I push through depending on the resolve I have for this day. And this is my inspiration to show to the world, if you want to be happy, you have to put in the work. If you say you want to be happy and you keep sitting around watching TV, well, then that's all it is for you. It's a fantasy. I wanted my fantasy to become a reality and I've put in the work. I've worked my ass off to get myself out of my own depression and to learn to use my depression as a vehicle to my happy place. And that's all there is. Not a fan, great fan of quotes, but just to quote Ramdas, he says, I don't care. You know, as soon as the heaviness starts, I start with my method. I don't care what I'm heavy about. You know, I just do my method because that's all there is. Sometimes I don't know why I'm heavy. All I know is that I'm heavy. And instead of sitting around all the time thinking why I'm heavy, I just start with my method. So I do an image and then I make the image and then I think, oh, what? why did I do that image now? What's it mean? I mean, yeah, sure. And by now I roughly know all the time what my topics are because I always have them in clear sight. I know what scares me. I know what depresses me. Not moving depresses me. Yeah. The fear of being unloved depresses me. So when I feel, you know, I feel like I'm unloved, you know, I do something about that. I give myself love. I hug myself. You know, sometimes I do watch movies simply because I feel like, you know, I'm not a machine. Right? I work with transitions one day at a time. Today is this day. Yesterday, maybe I did this. What do I need to do today? So I want to be flexible. Right? If you would live in nature, one day would be rain, the other would be hail, then it would be sunshine, you know, and sometimes all of it in the same day. So you have to adapt and be flexible. And that's what I learned to do with my emotions, because I don't know what's around the corner. Sometimes I make one step out of my room and bam, I have to face some great darkness. And that's the challenge. That's the journey of the hero nowadays. Today, the journey of the hero is to do what you want to do and face the heaviness and face the darkness that's inside of you. That's the journey of the hero these days. And that's what I'm living to its fullest. That's my adventure. And whatever challenge comes my way, it's part of it. 